We're back. Andor, season one, episode 11. Let's do it. Let's do it. Oh my gosh. Hang in there, kitty. So this is on... What is actually what planet is the prison on? What was the name of the planet? Mm. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Mm, we just started. We all... Okay, we have it on the yeah. character map. We do. Character map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the prison guys are all on the planet. Prison guys. Allegiance prison. Prison Narkina 5. Narkina That's right. 5. So here they just escaped from the prison. Uh-huh. And that the, uh-huh. that would be Andor and Melshi have just escaped. Melshi. And somehow they're scaling a cliff. How did this situation occur? <laughs> We just dropped in. We don't know what's going on. And they're like they desperately gripping for their life. My yeah. hunch is that they were running on top on the on the mesa. And they're like, we have got to we got to get behind something. But you're on a mesa. There's, there's nowhere to go. So they like climbed over the edge. But but they got these white prison uniforms like they're mm-hmm. super visible. They could be down on that ledge down on that ledge down to the left. I'll circle it. They, mm-hmm. they could be down there and they would blend in. But instead, they're like on this cliff um, standing out. Like yeah, this white uniforms would match very nicely with down there. That's right. That's right. And they wouldn't have to use their grip strength. Although, I guess from this perspective, down there could be very, very. I think that there. might actually be very far. According to this picture oh. of over here, I think it's quite far down. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Still, how does this situation occur? Oh my gosh. Oof. Anyway, they do get out of it eventually. They climb back up. My God! Some of the grip strength is just Ridiculous. muscle it up. Yeah. Everybody should do their pull-ups. Oh yes, badass Sinta, the barista. Sinta the barista. I think this might actually be consistent with her personality. She is so focused. Maybe this is a way for her to have an outlet. A little bit of talk to people, meet people, oh, that's coffee right. barista. But then every time, everything else is focused on the killing the empire. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's yeah. how she can like stay sane and stay social and be you know a human but also undercover mm-hmm. and i think it's she actually chose this job because this guy right here is an imperial agent yep he's the isb guy and i believe he doesn't know that cinta is oh, is a rebel. he doesn't know he doesn't he does, know. He, he's got no clue no clue yeah. he's arrogant isb guy that's right well-run shop, though. I like it. Yeah, neat and organized. Yeah. I'd get a drink there. Wow, me, me too. Heck yeah. So I didn't really understand these guys. Um, they captured right. these two aliens, captured Melshi and Cassian with their, like, spider web mine thing. But then they let him go. Why did they let him go? I didn't really understand that. So... Yeah, it was. I had to watch this twice. My understanding was that they set up a automatic defense, so that way no one could get the ship while they weren't paying attention. And then they were like, "Oh, these humans! Oh, the humans cause problems." And then they started talking about how the Empire like killed the planet. Like, I I suspect this place used to have fish and clean water and stuff, whatever else. And then and then when Andor and Melshi are like, "No, no, no, we were prisoners. Like, the Empire is awful." Then these guys are like. You know what? We're on the same team. And so then they released them and they're like, let's get you out of here. Let's get you mm-hmm. out. I see. So once they recognize them as Imperial prisoners that had escaped, they're like, you're good. Right. We don't need to like leave you here to die and fuck the Empire. Mm-hmm. So this is this planet uh, is a wasteland because of the Empire. So like these cliffs here are so. barren and back up top with the when they're scaling the cliffs, like this is all barren. Because and, the Empire strip mined it or something. And you can see there are like the leftover tree trunks. Oh, yeah, you totally can. So I think it used to have biology here. Yeah. So these guys must be maybe natives or maybe lived here a long time and now it's wrecked. Or even if they're like like traders, but they're like, mm-hmm. this place used to be beautiful. That's true. Yeah. <sighs> ah, the Empire. Oh, Empire. This Stepping is their, on toes left and right. Yeah, this is their ship, those two aliens. Hmm. Hmm. It's a quad hopper. jumper, I think he called it. Mm-hmm. Quad hopper, yeah. maybe. Quad and hopper, these are yeah. definitely turbines. Yeah, definitely turbines. Like they spin up. 
Yeah, and I see like if we look at this one right here, mm -hmm, then mm -hmm. it definitely looks like a high bypass turbo fan where the actual burning of the fuel goes on in the, this area. And then oh. air goes through here, which causes, has a lot of thrust with it, but is not burned. Oh. Um, that's what it looks like. Um, but I think this thing is space worthy. So there's no way it can be an air breathing turbine. Maybe it has different Maybe. modes. Yeah. Maybe it's a planet side mode and then they transition to something else mm -hmm. when they're off planet. Yeah, that could be. There's not a lot of room for fuel considering um, how, look how big these engines are compared to the fuselage. Yeah, I guess so, we don't know how fuel works though in Star we Wars. Don't, we don't know how fuel works in Star Wars. So it must be very, very efficient. Yeah. In terms of mass to thrust ratios, which is consistent with all the other, you know, spacecraft and stuff in Star Wars. Mm hmm. I mean, I guess for us to have a car that would be able to fly in Coruscant, we would need an enormous amount of gasoline. So they that's must right. have some type of fuel that's super small and, and powerful. That's right. And I guess in order to do that, you would think you normally have a, need a high exit velocity out the back. But I don't see um, in Star Wars like um, so the exit velocity out the back here. Uh, you don't see like jet wash. Yeah, you don't see ex extreme jet wash. So something else is going on that we don't understand. The tech is very advanced for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, anything sufficiently over our heads looks like magic, right? Looks like magic. That's right. Yeah. Ooh. Ah, cool. Clea. Clea in the back room. She is my favorite. Like she's <laughs> so cool and level-headed and steadfast in the cause and like managing all these things around Luthen. And she has like a full career at, at preserving these, these artifacts. Like her cover is a full career that she could have done well in on her own. And then she also does rebel stuff. Yeah. Ooh. Crazy. Cause this looks My like favorite. she's got this place set up so that she can actually do work on artifacts that are found around the galaxy and preserve them and you know clean them up because mm -hmm. these look like precision tools so yeah she's her cover isn't just you know cover it's actually legitimate and preparing these things it's it's a little bit of art it's a little bit of science she's mm -hmm. got both of the, both worlds there yeah absolutely and the underworld Ooh. yeah clear ah uh. Vel kind of irritated me here. She she's fully irritated me. She stormed into Clea's and Luthen's uh, antique shop uh, and was like breaking protocol left and right. Like they were not in character. Like they were a true customer and merchant. They were like kind of yelling at each other in their real personalities. I was like, Vel, what are you doing? You're breaking cover. What if somebody's listening? Oof. So. Yeah, what if somebody is like looking from the outside with some type of telescope? They'll see the unusual customer relationship, that's like that's right. something weird. Like you got to act, you got to fake it. You right. don't know when the Empire is listening. That's right. So for some reason, the back room is probably more secure. So they needed to have a more real conversation in the back room. They need to do it like Luthen does. And he's like, oh, maybe I have some other options in the back. Like, that's right. Take it. Yep. Oh, this this planet, this city, let me tell you what, their their construction is just immaculate. Look at this staircase. Where has the staircase been the entire episode? The entire season? Like this natural rock that they've carved out into these beautiful steps. I'd love to live here. And look and zoom out zoom out, go to the building on the right. Look at this rooftop. Nice little slant. You can put your feet down on the low end, put your head on the high end, relax comfortably, watch the stars. Summer must be amazing here. And across from this, across from this in the courtyard, nice little coffee stop place. You sit down with your buddies, have a little little snack in the middle of the day, get back to work. This would be so much fun. So much fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like Ferrix. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's just so people-centric. They even have stairwells built not just stairs but like it's built with the rock face 
right there. It's built the building, right it. you know. Beautiful. Yeah, I love it. And like the everyone in the town is a community. They all bang the, the clang the, the like scrap metal all together. Yeah. Like these people care about each other. They care about each other. I'd love to live there. And the the air the walkways between the buildings where these people are is pedestrian centric. There's no vehicles screwing everything up. No speeders like get down. Yeah. Like, no, no, no. So people stop traffic. and chat and say hi. What a town. That's right. What a town. Krieger. Yeah, so I think Bix is getting interrogated here and they ask her, is Axis this guy, Krieger? And mm. I'm pretty sure she said yes, but it wasn't shown. I don't know and if I she think says we, anything. She just she's just yeah. is broken. I don't know. Yeah, she's broken, yeah. Yeah. But we I don't think we ever meet this guy, and I think he's Luthen sentences him to die to keep the intelligence sources safe. That's right. In order to keep Lonnie young, keeping keeping him mm-hmm. out of the ISB's radar. So keep him mm-hmm. operating inside there. He has to let Krieger go. Yeah. You know, in World War II, the Allies had to do this against the Germans after they really? broke the Enigma Code. Yeah. They oh, had to shit. let, they had to choose which operations knew intelligence and which didn't. Because they didn't want to give away their hand that they knew uh, the code. Ah, uh... That's right. If if every single operation, the the British and the Americans are like oh, there before they the Germans get there, the Germans are gonna mm-hmm. be like something Germans is like, wrong here. Change so codes. Need, yeah, exactly. So you need to pick and choose the right operations, and let the rest of them fall where they may. Oof. Has to be done. But it has. To, but it's tactically right. That's right. Yeah, at all levels, from government all the way down to the the lowest guy, it has to be done. Brutal. This is Mon Mothma's daughter joining a cult. Lita. 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 Yes. Looks like a cult. They all do their hair the same way, all dress the same way. Basically teenage girls. Yep. Yep. We said, like, this is actually rebellion against rebellion is conformity. That's right. That's what they have. So she's rebelling against the Coruscant life. Which means she wants to pick up her. What is the planet called? Chan, Chandra, some Chandrila. Oh, got it. Excellent. Chan, Chandrila. 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 Yeah. yeah. So, so, Mon Mothma went through this traditional um, mm-hmm. upbringing, and then she's like, "I don't. I'm. I'm here in Coruscant now. I want to live a, a metropolitan life, right? Or cosmopol- cosmopolitan life." And then she, Moth, Mon, also said that on Chandrila, they don't really do this anymore. So I get it. I get it. Like Leda, Leda is removed from her home planet. She's removed from her culture. And so she's grasping for this identity, which means picking up the old ways, even though people in, in Chandrila don't do it anymore. I get it. This is, this makes sense for her. Mm-hmm. Makes sense that she would want to do this. Mm-hmm. Agreed. I still, though, I still get some vibes that she knows what's going on a little bit and she may have something to do with the rebellion. Leda. Mm-hmm. Like right now, right now she's yeah. looking over at Vel. Everyone else is engaged in their cult stuff. No, 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 traditional stuff. <laughs> and, and like she knows, she knows like Aunt, Aunt and Mon are talking, talking over there with something going on. Right. And she's it's giving them clients. a look like, like it's not just a conversation like gossip or politics. It's like yeah, yeah. maybe a real rebel conversation. Yes. She's actually right. Palpatine. She's, she's actually Palpatine. She's force projecting a teenage girl as Palpatine. Wait, Palpatine yeah, is right. force projecting a teenage girl yeah, to yeah, yeah. infiltrate Mon Mothma's apartment. <laughs> no <smart>. way. <laughs> Bell. Bell. Supposed Bell to act is like dropping a rich girl. on cousin Mon. Mm-hmm. They're talking about money laundering. I yeah, felt Mon- it. Mon Mothma has to make the call that her daughter, Lita, has to meet um, the son of the the thug banker. I don't remember their names. Let me go over here. Um, his name is Davos Skaldin. Davos Skaldin. And his son, Stecken. Stecken. 
Charles Deccan. Terrible name. Okay. <laughs> um, he didn't choose it. Yeah, he Sorry. didn't choose it. So Davo will do the money laundering for Mon Mothma only if Mon Mothma agrees that Lida meets his son, Steckin. I mean, but but it's just meets, right? It, it, like Mon meets. Mothma is not, she's not committing her daughter Lida to marry this guy, right? That's right. And so in fact, all she would have to do to shut it down is approve of this guy. And then teenage daughter is going to be like, no, mommy, I don't want this. Mm -hmm. Problem solved. Yeah. A little reverse psychology on the daughter. Play the game on Mom. That's how it's done. <laughs> but ooh, anyway, this whole, si it. this whole She's situation is getting it. to her. Yep. She's on the line. Like, like if, if those balances aren't fixed in time, then her and her family are all going to die. And the rebellion is going to be turned upside down. There's so much pressure on her right now. Mm -hmm. This is her only way out to trade her daughter. Like, oof. But yep. you gotta. Well, I mean, okay, not trade the daughter just yet. Just set up oh, a meeting. Yeah, sure. Just set up. Sure. <laughs> but it, it's risking the daughter into that life of these people that you want to keep her out of. Right. And so it's a trade <laughs> in the sense of the risk. I mean, yeah. wasn't Mon Mothma married at 15? It's true. But she, so. I guess she married her husband. I don't know what his family is like, but he turned out to be kind of a not so nice guy. Right. And I guess Mon Mothma's mother's like, sold, Mon Mothma, off you go. I, I, sh I shouldn't be so <laughs> I shouldn't be so mean to the husband he's he has vices but he's not right. I don't think I've seen him do anything like malicious like that's right but he's got vices right that doesn't mean he's a terrible person he's just right. they don't get along yeah this is Cyril's bro the guy what, what was it what a name? bro what a bro I I'll look it up cool. here we go uh, I think this predates when we made this chart. Yeah, this predates before we... Because he hasn't been around since we... Oh, since that's we right. That. Yeah, okay. Did I write down his name? I'll cut this part. Yeah. So this is uh, one of the corporate the guys. Sergeant. The, the sergeant. The sergeant that, that helps out Cyril during the chase for Cassian in the first couple episodes. And I thought he was kind of a manipulator, kind of telling Cyril what he wanted to hear to you know, help him out help himself out and help Cyril out. But he, like this is, he didn't need to tell, like contact Cyril from across the galaxy and tell Cyril where Cassian is as a favor. Yeah. He just didn't need to do it. So this guy's really looking out for I mean, Cyril. They have effectively already split ways and are leading separate lives. And they mm -hmm. could have moved on, but instead he helps out Cyril. I don't think he gets anything in return other than uh, I guess a friend. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. Rose for life. Rose for life. Hang on to this guy. <laughs> That's Andor on the right in the hotel, retrieving his gun and tons of money from, from a box that was just <laughs> chilling there. Just <laughs> above the shower. Yeah. Yep. So how long was he in the work camp for? I think it was months. I think so, right? So this months. hotel cleaning staff and patrons and guests did not find his stash which was placed above the shower head in plain view <laughs> it's just in plain yeah. view and i think it was placed as it's shown right here it's he's moved it but he on like the second platform yeah so he if i recall he, earlier yeah he placed it like up here yeah yeah yeah, yeah right yeah. above the shower head but he yeah. must have in this shot he must have moved it over here and is just making sure everything's there so what are you nope. doing, Cassian? Get out. Take the box. Leave the hotel. Check it outside. Yeah. If everything's gone, everything's gone. There's nothing you can do. If everything's there, and you get got a out. nice box. Yeah. <laughs> it's always a silver lining. Nice box. Yeah. So lucky. This is Saul's base. Saul's base. Very, very rebellion. Vibey. Mm. Mm. Love it. Ragtag through and through. Ragtag. But this nice tech computer in the in the middle there. Oh, yeah. yeah very cool. Slightly crooked because the floor is crooked. The floor is crooked. <laughs> Level your shit saw. Yeah, and he puts a cup down and just tips over. Tips over, yeah. <laughs> Onto the electronics and they all short out. And, oh, got to require a new uh, thing. Uh, well, where well, the rebellion. <laughs> what you going to do? <laughs> what you going to do? I was got when uh, Luthen and Saw talk to each other in yeah. Saw's hideout 
they were having like a really intelligence-laden conversation that I wouldn't be comfortable having other people over here, but they were having it out in the open. I didn't really understand why. They were talking about the empire was about to strike at Krieger mm -hmm. and they like, were like, should we intervene? Should we not? And they were saying it in front of people. Like right. there could be a spy. What are you doing? Yeah. So Luthen is like seriously trusting that Saw has done all of the vetting and due diligence for every worker in the area. Because if somebody was an Imperial agent or an Imperial sympathizer, or who knows what. That well, they found the there. access now. They found the access. That's right. This needed to be in a, what is it called? A strong room? Strong room. Yeah. Just in the back somewhere secured. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At least a separate room with a door closed. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> don't, don't fight in front of the kids at least. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. So I should be like, step into my office, Luthen. Ooh, this ship. Mm -hmm. What was this ship called? This was a Cantwell class. Cantwell class. A Cantwell okay. class. Let me get this centered here. So I'd never seen this in Star Wars before, but I guess it's some kind of like oh, patrol yeah. slash tractor beam slash surveillance craft. Mm. It looks Star Destroyer inspired, but it. I don't think it's like battle ready. It's like it's surveillance. Yeah. Which is you know fair because we have we have mm -hmm. like fighter planes, bombing planes, and also spy planes, like different roles. That's right. That's right. And I think let's actually watch the battle that goes down. Um, cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let's do it. Yeah. Let's do it. Here we go. So they find him. And then Stand by for transponder scan. Yes, this is Aldran 12912505. Piracy zone. Oh, thank you for the warning. Uh, I'll be careful. Power up the track. Smooth. Getting pulled in. Decoy burn, port thruster four. Countermeasures charging. Calibrate tractor force. Calibrate. Confirm request, Hall car. Sorry, Patrol. I'm a one man show here. So clever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boom! This yeah. maneuver. It's a little fuck you right in front of the bridge. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Sure. So Dude, was a, a badass. Yeah, seriously. He was antique really... Antique guy versus... Antique guy yeah. slash combat pilot. <laughs> yeah. He was really prepared for this situation. He had decoys ready, he decoy IDs ready. Uh, he had done this, what is it called? Like social engineering, you know, where you like pretend to be somebody you're not. And he's like really good at the delivery. Yeah. Um, and on the fly, like I'm a one man show over here. I probably so clever. Up, yeah, so clever. So smooth. And then the tech he has, he has the anti-tractor beam tech, which is like the dart, darty boys. Mm -hmm. the darty then, boys. Then he has the auto cannons. Which seems okay. like auto target the TIE fighters and just take them out. Uh, and then the uh, the spinny laser twirly, twirly swords, twirly the, swords the chiral yeah. chiral vector twirly sword corkscrew yeah. slice them up, got them. Yeah, it was cool. Although now the the empire is going to be on alert. Something and they have happen. they have communications recorded with him. That's right. Like so, they know what his voice is like, and they know that that. I mean, they may not know that he's the Axis, but they know that that voice came from this place. That's right. So, if they could bring all that information together, Luthen's voice, the fact that there was this person who was well prepared to get away from a tractor beam, well the prepared. location on Saw's planet, 
information is He's there. Leaving breadcrumbs for them. Yeah, that's right. That's right. We'll see if this comes back those... to bite them. Yeah, we'll see. I wonder if those darty boys. Mm -hmm. They looked like they had a little bit of propulsion to get them, you know, launched out. Mm -hmm. They were totally rearward facing, which means anticipating a tractor beam. Mm -hmm. And then it looked like that after that initial push, a little, little, little impulse to get them out of the, the launch tubes, it looks like they just get pulled in by the tractor beam. Mm -hmm. like the tractor beam pulls them into the dish, which then messes up the dish. Like, is this a really specialized, anticipated anti-tractor beam device? I think so. I don't think those massive darts could be effective at their slow speeds against anything but a tractor beam. So, like the tractor beam actually like pulls them in, which accelerates them, gives them kinetic energy that's then deposited into the dish, fucks it up. Yeah, I agree. Let's watch Super one more smart. time. Super smart. Right. It's not like normal star wars lasers and it's not like a missile that we saw in like episode two where there's like like a combustion out the end of an explosive warhead like i think these are just launch them out the tube and let the tractor beam kill the ship yeah and they are moving rel i mean they're moving fast for like everyday speeds but i think for space battles they're moving extremely slowly yeah. so i think it's tractor beam specific so luthan has a lot of gizmos and gadgets on that thing for sure. Yeah. Very cool. So cool. Yeah. It was fun watching that battle. Yeah. What's the last thing we got? Oh, that's it. Oh, that was the end. That was the end. End or season one, episode 11. One more. One more. That was a fun episode. Can't I'm wait so to see excited. what happens in number 12. <laughs>